This video will be about these single motor uh, toy robots I've designed. I'm releasing the files on a couple of uh, file sharing websites like Thingiverse and uh, Prusa Printers. First I'll demonstrate it working. It's controlled by a... Uh, there's two versions of it. One of them is controlled by this switch box. It's just a wired remote. The other one is controlled by an infrared remote. To turn it on first. So when the, when it when we press forward, it walks forward. Stop. When we press reverse, it will spin in place for steering. Forward. It always spins the same direction. The other version, let me turn this off, is this uh, wire, wired remote version. It just has four double A's in the uh, switch box here. Forward, works forward. Motor runs in reverse, it spins. This video will be to show how they're built. I've done a couple of videos uh, as I was developing it, uh, and you can watch those to uh, get more info on exactly what's going on. It's based on a, a double ratchet and paw mechanism that drives. It's, well, first of all, it's, this is not glued on, it's just sitting there for now. This is called a pin walker. I'll show it on the uh, battery controlled one. There are two pins that propel it, make it walk or appear to walk. When it goes forward, they both go in the same direction. When it goes in reverse, one of them goes in the opposite direction to make it spin. So it's called a pin walker. This ratchet mechanism is what uh, does the reverse direction on one side of it. One one pin always goes the direction that the motor is driving it. The other pin always goes the same direction. And that gives you your forward and your reverse spinning action. I'm going to uh, take this apart and put it back together to show how it's built. So anyone who wants to build one can uh, can do can do it. It's driven by a the remote control version. It's driven by a board like this. It's one I've used in uh, other projects, and I have links to uh, where you can go to get to download the information for making a board, ordering it. You saw it to solder it together, but you can order the boards made. Uh, this one has a pickaxe. There's also an A Tiny 85 version. The pickaxe is pretty easy to program. Uh, the A Tiny 85 version, uh, well, it's not that hard to program, but it uh, requires, they both require a little bit of special hardware, but not too much. Well, now I'm going to take this apart and uh, show you. I'll, I'll do the uh, remote control version when it's uh, when it has all the latest uh, files on it. There's the infrared sensor in the top that uh, receives the info. So I'll start taking it apart right now. The main body is held on by two screws. Now that the screws are out, the body will pull straight up. This will stay in place. There's the body with its arms. I'll show you the way the arms are put together later. Here's that pickaxe board. The battery comes from this wire to the other side. Here's the battery for powering it. These two wires go to a motor. The infrared sensor is soldered to the board right here. I'll take off the top of it now. This would normally be glued in if you were doing for a finished product. There's a hole in there that you thread the wires down through before you solder them on. 
a board is just double sided taped foam double sided taped to this component here I call it the board carrier there are two screws holding it on they're also two millimeter by eight millimeter screws there are headers down here for plugging in the motor there would normally be headers here for plugging in the IR sensor but I ran out of room this is a pretty tight fit so I had to solder them to a board we'll unplug the battery set all this aside so the wires fed through to the front here's the battery it's a lipo for like a quadcopter or something I bought it on Banggood with the chargers and everything here's a little switch I put a link in the uh, description on the Thingiverse and printables to where which switch I used this board but there this is single sided or double sided taped this battery to this board it uses a thin double sided scotch tape not the thick foam stuff this is all a very tight fit so you can't waste waste room on the foam tape a couple more two millimeter by eight millimeter screws there's a little uh, channel in there that the wire feeds through and here we have the, uh, the frame this part's called the frame, the frame clamp the legs the cams, the pins that drive it, the N20 motor. This for the uh, remote control version. I used a 6 volt 200 RPM motor. For the battery driven version, I used a 6 volt 160 RPM motor. The reason is that this is only like a, a lipo is like 4 volts, and this is 6 volts on your four double-A cells that are in here we can uh, also have another switch box it's just two the switch box is just made of two uh, single pole double throw switches I'll show the wiring diagram or put a, a picture of it in the video we can hook this motor up and show it working You need a switch box like this when you're testing it. Uh, just makes it easier. You can see the reason I went with a, a slower motor in the this version, the battery operated version. It's walking really fast now. And here is the key to the whole thing. We have two bevel gears that have a uh, ratchet on them. I'll try to show it. Maybe right there you can see it. I hope this little ratchet here. These little blue things in the center are called pawls. These things. And they're what provides the ratcheting mechanism. Uh, we also have a bevel gear up here that drives both the gears in opposite directions. I'm going to take it apart a little. I had to take it apart to show you how to put it back together. It's not the easiest thing to put together. Before I take that second one out, I need to take the legs off. The legs are just held on by a couple more of the same screws. 3 millimeter by 12 millimeter. The pins are held on by two more of the same screws. These are the pins. You can see uh, these pins have to ride freely on this screw with slots on the pins. The reason these marks are on here, they're printed in, I've also highlighted that one in black. This one is printed in it. These, these cams have to operate out of phase for it to 
180 degrees apart for it to walk correctly so it, both pins don't go down at the same time and that's why all, all the timing critical things come in to play now we can take this last part off when I take this off it's going to lose its timing a critical thing is this gear is in mesh with these two gears and that's what keeps everything timed up together so the relationship of this gear to this gear when they're meshed with this gear is very important I'm going to lose that as soon as I take this piece here off and pull this out hopefully I can pull it out well maybe not I'll have to take the uh, hot glue off the motor because it's still all locked in I'll have to take the hot glue off the motor I've got the hot glue I've got the hot glue free so we can move the motor up a little bit There's a little spacer here also between the bubble gear and the motor. Now we can pull this out. I'll show you the relationships timing wise between all this stuff. These two these two piles in here, they are keyed together. Are to be assembled 180 degrees apart. So this one is down, this one is up. The cam, well, first of all, the pause and the, this cam over here on the right, this side just comes off. The pause and the cam on the right are all attached permanently to this 52 millimeter eighth inch brass shaft. This is just pressed on. These are super glued on. They have, they have a relationship between each other. If you draw a line from here to here, you'll end up right here in line with this line. So all that has to be lined up when you assemble it. When you assemble it, you have to trap this uh, gear, which has a little spacer here, in between the pawls and the cam. So it has to be timed right. You can see the relationship again. Line right here. These are lined up 180 degrees apart. This one, this side here. When you assemble it, it's two pieces, the cam, this little spacer part, and the bevel gear. There is a key in it so you can't get this side wrong. And it spins freely on this shaft. It doesn't fit like that, I'm just showing you it spins freely. It's like this. When you assemble it, you have to make sure you get all this in the right, right relationship. Uh, don't put the, these on backwards. Don't get this one over here and that one over here because then you, it won't work right either. They, these will hit on the uh, back side, not the front side of the ratchet part. See the way that hits? If you assemble it backwards, this will come up from this side and hit. That won't work. So that's uh, that's for timing relationship on here and here. We, we can put it back together now like this. And there's one last critical thing you've got to get for it to work right. And just throw those in there. Make sure you put them on the right side. Uh, this one that is permanently attached goes on uh, when you're looking at it here the right side. This one goes on the left side. Now, when we mesh these two gears together with the bevel gear up here, that's going to lock it all in place. So that 
the timing between this gear and this gear has to be right. Okay, I've marked the two bevel gears. Take it apart. This one will show better. Where the ratchet is here, I've marked that tooth. I've done the same thing on the other side. When we assemble these, we're going to want this one pointed straight up and this one pointed straight down, 180 degrees from each other. That's, that's when we want this gear to mesh with them. This is not the easiest thing in the world to do. Especially try to get it on camera. So this one straight up. This one over here straight down. Not sure where it's at. And hopefully that'll lock it in. We'll test it before we screw it all together. We got the gear meshed up here. We just push this down, not get too crazy, not too tight. And then we're going to use our switch box to uh, run it, run it around. I'm going to mark the other side here with a marker. Should have done that beforehand. So I'm holding all this just loosely in place. When we run it one direction, we should this this motor's running too fast for this voltage. This one's straight down. And this one's straight up more or less. They may be a few degrees apart. That's probably because of the uh math in, math inside where the gears uh didn't turn out just right. I mean the uh Everything didn't turn out just right. Then we run it the opposite direction. Straight down, more or less straight up. There you can see some of the. Well, first of all, this side over here is not always driven. Uh, this side, the uh, left side, the cam is always. The cam is always directly connected through this gear to this gear, so it's going to just go whichever way this gear drives it. This side is driven through this ratchet and pawl mechanism, so there are places in there so you can see it turning freely. So we're going to try that again, one direction, straight down more or less more or less straight up. The other direction, you can also see the way this switches direction when that happens. It wasn't turning so fast. More or less straight down, more or less straight up. So let's lock, put our two screws in here and lock this in place before we lose it. And then we'll also put a little more uh, uh, hot glue back on here. I'll do that uh, off camera because I got to get the hot glue gun going. I have the uh, frame clamp secured to the frame to clamp in the motor. <coughs> also, hot glued the motor in a little more. Don't get too carried away in the hot glue. It's all a pretty tight fit in there. I'll continue the assembly. Next, we'll put on the pin. You want to leave these a little loose, have to slide up and down. Always want to make sure that the things are staying in time. It shouldn't lose time after you get this locked in. If you had made a mistake, you could loosen this up and just slip this gear around one or two tooth until you got it in right, uh, just by trial and error. Now I'm going to put the uh, legs on. They, uh, this, there's a square part here, but it's just going to butt up 
against the frame and then it'll be held on by the screw. I'm going to get that pretty snug, don't get too crazy with it. Doesn't take much to hold it. There's not a lot of stress on any of this stuff. Hold that up against there while you're tightening it up. Everything lined up. See if it walks forward. Walks pretty fast with the uh, six six volts on this 200 RPM motor. Spin around. Forward. Okay, it's working. If you get them out of time, what it'll do is it'll it'll both pins will be down at some time and it'll just start doing this. It's not what you want. Now we can continue to. If you're going to build the wired version, you would just put the uh, the brain box on with this one screw. If you're going to build the remote version, you need to do all the server stuff. Feed them. Feed the sensor down through to the board, solder it on, and then put the wire on. I'm not sure I'm going to go through the reassembly of it because the video is going to be really long. I'll show a little bit about the body. The uh, body, it's just one piece, prints like this. When you uh, print the body, there will be a sacrificial bridge here that's just plastic is going to be bridged across here so it can be printed without supports because you can't print these round circles just up in the mid-air but if you do like one layer of plastic bridging across and then you can come out easily and trim it out with an exacto knife or when you get done that's what way this is so as long as you slice it at a uh, I believe I sliced at a one a point one six millimeter height There'll be one layer of plastic running across there. There's also a couple of bridges in other places, but they're drilled holes, so you'll, except for, there, there'll be a bridge right, a sacrificial bridge right here, that you'll have to cut out to get that in. Same problem here, just a hole up in the top of something. The other bridges are just in the holes, so you just have to run your drill through them. This is the same 3mm by 12mm screw used in other places. One thing about this, so that the arms are poseable, you need a little bit of spring action. That's just done with a O-ring out of a Harbor Freight O-ring kit. That's all that, that provides you a little bit of tension to keep the arm in place. The arm is printed in two parts. Uh, thought I had an example laying around here somewhere. But anyway, uh, so that it could be printed without supports and come out nice. It's printed in two parts, but down the middle. On each part there are two holes. You take a piece of uh, 1.75 millimeter filament and stick in there and that'll give you some alignment. You can just stick a little piece of film in there on each side, each one. And then you have, there's holes on the other side too, and they'll just line up to help help glue it together. Before you glue it together, put this. And there's a little pocket in there. You'll see. Just put the little hand in there, and you super glue it together. And that's about all there is to that. The this was vacuum form, vacuum formed. I will. If a previous video I did shows a uh, mold and basically how I did it, I didn't show the vacuum forming process. It was just a simple box I made up with a uh, shop vac hooked up to it. I heated the plastic up that was clamped in a frame. I heated it up with a heat gun and then uh, pushed it down over the buck that I made out of plaster of Paris. Uh, with the vacuum running. To make the buck I used a mold and I'll include the uh, files for the mold with all these other files if you want to give that a whirl. Much easier to do. Much easier to do is this. This is just a 
50 millimeter Christmas tree ornament uh, that you can buy on eBay. Uh, it fits in this little adapter here. You could glue that in if you wanted to, or probably probably cut that off, or probably will cut that off. This little tab. But this is the side you want to use with the lip, like that. And you can just. It also has locating tabs right here, and they mesh with. Uh, that's an old version. I shouldn't show that one. Uh, they mesh with tabs on this brain box right here. I'll try to show that. And that'll key that in. Like that. So, after you get it all assembled with the brain box mounted with the screw right here. This will spin a little so you, you, you'll want to uh, adjust it as you put the front the body down on it until it meshes up with show how that works hopefully show how that works like that with that tab coming through these places over here after you get all that lined up you can run the screws in to the back of the body to hold it on and after you get all that lined up you can uh, put this on that you get it in place if you want to you can put a little bit of glue on it I wouldn't get too crazy with the glue you wouldn't want to glue, glue the brain box to the uh, body those are the options that with this this is hard to uh, this is hard to make I thought about including this but I don't I think it kind of messes everything up I think this is a better option if you can't can't do the vacuum forming it's much much nicer even if you don't need to clear clear globe for the infrared receiver if you want to make a switch box like this this is just a I believe this is three or four AA batteries I can't remember now Maybe just three. It's three AA batteries uh, and two single pole double throw switches. And here's how they are wired. The commons go to the motor. The commons on the switches go to the motor. The normally opens are connected together. The normally closed are connected together. One terminal of, the, of your battery box will come to a normally closed. The other terminal will go to a normally open. And that is all there is to it. So it's pretty simple setup. You can just do it like I did, not glue it together if you want to. I'm also going to release in the next few days, hopefully, this files for this, which is basically this in a little nicer form. What's inside this box is this. Two, two switches same type of switches as this but these are different sizes than the one on the box obviously and out the back you'll do the same wiring that you did on the other box this is made in uh, several parts this is an old version of, but this is two pieces that are glued together and there's a little in the final version top piece glues on top of this. I'll release uh, this holds four AA batteries or a 18650 lipo cell. It will accept either one. I'll do a video on that as soon as I get the files done showing uh, what's in it. I believe that's all I've got on uh, this. I did a couple of previous videos showing the development of it. I'll link to those link to those in the description. I might have a few more details that I forgot. Uh, it's been a fun project, an interesting project, and I like the way it turned out. I think it looks pretty good. Well, thanks for watching.